Intel vs AMD has been a battle for many, many years, but who will win in the year 2022? Since they are now releasing on the same day, here's all the information we know about the launch. But before we get into it, first we can look at the core and thread difference between the two. There is a bunch to unpack here. At first glance, you can see that Intel CPUs from top to bottom have more cores. You can also see that Ryzen has not implemented anything to combat the efficiency cores that Intel introduced in their 12th gen processors. However, the thread difference between the two is slightly different. All of AMD CPUs have a 1 core to a 2 thread ratio throughout. Since Intel started incorporating efficiency cores that only have a ratio of 1 core to 1 thread, it allows for a Ryzen processor to have the same amount of threads with 8 less cores. Staying on the topic of specs, gigahertz are an important yet very skewed way to compare CPUs. The only reason we bring this up is because the emphasis that both these companies put on that one number. Gigahertz are all treated differently, so a 500 boost clock on an Intel and AMD CPU will not be the same when it comes to the actual performance of each processor. This means these numbers are rather irrelevant until we're hands on. Looking at the previous generational increase in performance from both Intel and AMD, we can see approximately where the next generation CPUs will be. With the most recent Cinebench R23 leaks of the flagship i9-13900K, it scored an impressive 35,693 points in the multi-score test and a 2290 in the single core test. This was a pretty drastic increase from the performance of the i9-12900K. Ryzen, on the other hand, has a little less information. The last generation's flagship, the Ryzen 9 5950X, scored higher than the 12th Gen i9 in multi-core performance, but fell behind slightly in single-core testing. It's anticipated that the new 7000 series will have less than a 15% improvement on single-threaded performance and less than a 35% increase on multi-threaded tasks. Well, that helps just as much as throwing water on a grease fire, so scaling these estimates to a reasonable 10 and 25% would lead us to... Almost exactly where we are right now. So unless AMD blows past their projections, we'll once again seeing AMD win on the multi-thread performance and Intel winning on the single-thread performance. But realistically, which means more? Single or multi-core? Well, the simple answer is multi-core. For things like gaming and video editing, your system will be using more than one core. Traditionally, anywhere from four to eight, which means if these numbers do pan out, AMD might just be the way to go. But wait, wait, wait. There might be another win in the AMD column. CPU cache allows instructions to be executed and data to be read and written at higher speeds. It's essentially like really, really fast RAM. On the flagship AMD 7950X, we're looking at 80 megabytes of total cache. And on the i9-13900K, we're looking at only 66 megabytes of total cache. We're not sure the split between L2 and L3, but it's not looking too good. Remember how you bought that 750 watt power supply with the hopes of future upgrades? Well, we're sorry. Wattages are pretty similar between GPUs and CPUs. The faster they work, the more power they need. The i9-13900K will require more than 250 watts. But don't worry, AMD's flagship isn't too far behind, requiring 230. Well, uh, here's all the other projected wattages, but these numbers are most likely going to change, and probably more than once. After going through everything that's been leaked so far, we need to talk about the potential price of each. By no means are these prices finalized, as neither of these companies have released any information on it yet. But if these numbers are anything to go off of, maybe Intel will have the price performance edge on the flagship CPUs. We also can't forget that the motherboard you need will be a big factor in choosing either AMD or Intel. AMD is moving away from the 6-year-old AM4 socket to the new AM5 socket. This will force you to buy a new and most likely expensive motherboard. It also appears that these new AM5 motherboards will only support DDR5 memory, which is slightly disappointing considering the price of DDR5 right now. In this new socket, they'll also be switching from a PGA to an LGA design, which means the CPU will have pads rather than the pins on the CPU. The one major upside about the new socket is its backwards compatibility with the older AM4 coolers, unlike Intel's transition from LGA 1200 to 1700. Intel is sticking with the same socket as last generation. This means that they'll be supporting DDR4 for at least one more year. This will be short-lived though, as they're expected to move to the LGA 2551 socket for their 14th gen CPUs. AMD is known to keep their sockets for a much longer period of time than Intel, so this is something you need to consider if you're trying to future-proof your build. So far, we know of three models of the AM5 board. Two of them will support PCIe 5.0, and the more budget-friendly B650 board will just be Gen 4. All of these boards will have CPU and RAM overclocking capabilities. Unlike Intel, which will only support CPU overclocking on their Z or W680 boards. On the other side of the spectrum, these new and shiny AM5 motherboards are going to be not only really hard to get your hands on, but you're most likely going to have to pay a pretty penny for them as well. Though, should you upgrade? There's no clear answer yet, as all this information is not confirmed. But we can say that these new CPUs and motherboards are jam-packed with the newest features, and will deliver the fastest speeds we've ever seen in any consumer products. 